Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you my thoughts on SPY, the Qs, and IWM. I don't have any trade ideas for you since nothing's really setting up, nothing worth sharing anyways, so we will definitely take a look at all of our core companies briefly. I also want to say thank you to every single one of you who has subscribed to the channel. We hit the 10K goal uh, over the course of the last couple of days, and I appreciate every single one of you. We are going to do a giveaway. Stay tuned for the details in the weekly watch list coming out this Sunday. Day. All right, so jumping right into our S&P analysis, starting off as always with our S&P sectors, who was leading, who was losing, and where was our weight? The XLY for the consumer discretionary led the pack today up about, you know, just shy of 1%, and the XLV for the healthcare sector, the third heaviest weighted sector, was down about 0.6. Now, XLY is a decent chunk of the S&P, but as we know, the heaviest weight is always going to be that tech sector, the XLK here, essentially flat, right? Up, or excuse me, down about one basis point, 0.01%, not really a big deal. It wasn't providing a whole lot of drag on the S&P, and I would say, you know, counterbalance with something like the XLF, the second heaviest weighted sector being up 0.3, uh, you know, things kind of balance out when you have something heavier weight, but not down as much, and then something less weight, obviously up more, they counterbalance each other, and that's essentially why we saw a flat marketplace here in uh, the Qs and SPY, and obviously IWM there, the clear winner, almost up 2%. We'll talk about that chart, though, as we get to it for now. Let's quickly flip through our sector charts, make sure there's no uh, outstanding risk here. I would say XLK looks fine, right? We clearly put in the double bottom here. We talked about that potential higher low last week. All good. We took out the neckline, did go higher. Now we're just holding, which of course has to be more bullish than bearish. If it was bearish, they just would have sold it off here as we came into this area of resistance. Wasn't the case, right? So holding up here, it, it looks more bullish than bearish to me as the chart currently sits. Obviously, the next most important task would be coming up and setting an equal high somewhere up here, but that is quite a long shot into the the end of the week. I would say for now, I would look for sideways to higher in the XLK, XLF, the financial sector after that. Again, just kind of holding sideways here, consolidating actually into a nice little wedge, right? If we draw something in like this, just holding, consolidating sideways again, because it's not backing off hard, it would lead me to believe the overall trend is likely to continue. And we would see an upswing here in the financials, again, with inflation talks kind of hitting the headlines. Uh, you know, any, any raising of rates would bode well for this sector overall. And obviously not so much for the XLK. We discussed that last week as well. And then we'll just check in on the XLV Healthcare. Uh, again, no major issues here. Held this as the low. Did set a new higher high from here, which is, of course, a good thing. But backing off now, again, I'd like to see a higher low be put in. So ideally, I don't want to see it come back down and test 121.62 again. However, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I would say, again, something like that is probably the ideal scenario where we bottom out above that area, 122, 122.50 somewhere in that general zone after one, two, three, four red days in a row. Uh, not not huge on candle counting, but with the lower wick in place here, it does look like it could use a little bit of either sideways or buying activity as people sort of jump in after this small, you know, very, very benign sell off here in the XLV. Let's move over to the TNX for the 10 year rate TNX. There we go and check in on our interest rates. Again, as this sort of heats up in the headlines, you will see this range here uh, be broken, but as of right now, nothing nothing sort of happening, right? Just bouncing and balancing in this range, no big deal. I think the market has fully adjusted to that. And again, until headlines start flying, I don't think anything is you know really worth paying attention to here in the TNX. We'll check in on the VIX for our volatility. And we'll notice, of course, that it did come back down underneath our 2050 mark. I don't necessarily think volatility is completely evaporated. We'll talk about that uh, as we get into the SPY chart. But just know in terms of the VIX, it did come back down below our key level. Let's go over to our SPY now and talk about some technical levels headed into the end of the week. Um, and again, if you were if you were watching today, especially on Wednesday, completely boring session, right? Completely inside of the prior day's range as well. And I would even argue that we have a small micro three-day balance here, right? We did take out that 418 
uh, top of the overall balance, right? We've talked about this one incessantly, but now I would say, again, a little micro balance has formed here three days in a row where the range really hasn't budged much. Also, value is overlapping. We'll talk about that when we get to the profile. Uh, but for now, the reason I say I don't really expect volatility to completely go away is because there's two scenarios that we're watching for into the end of the week. Obviously, taking out this bump in the road here at 420.73 puts the all-time high in play, right? We're looking at two, or excuse me, 423.56, the true all-time high from the overnight session, or a breakdown back underneath essentially the 418 with acceptance. And for that, I think that would trigger a volatility event where you may see some liquidation where anyone who got long on this sort of fake break here is just gonna close their position, right? And that could lead to sort of the domino effect and give us some selling into potentially the, the gap fill underneath, right? So that is one, the second scenario into the end of the week. And obviously door number three is just continued sideways action. But I don't necessarily think that's the case. We didn't have anything really on the docket for financial news today. Again, not much of a news person, but just knowing when these events are happening can drive, you know, when you see volatility in the marketplace. Like tomorrow, for example, we have jobs at 8.30, right? That is something that should move the market. After that, we have pending homes at 10 a.m. So those two things are on my radar as potential catalysts that move the market in one or two directions. And again, probably why I'm I'm leaning away from option number three here, just more sideways continued action, you know, in that three-day balance. So that's going to sort of be my levels into the uh, end of the week here, watching, of course, underneath that 418. We'll talk about that in futures in just a moment. But I also want to show you guys something. Uh, people ask about this often. You know, how can you predict what the move may be into the end of the week? Come over to your options chain and definitely just check out this expected move here in the top right hand corner. So right now options are predicting that into the end of the week we'll see about a three and a half dollar move. And if we go back over to our SPY daily chart here, that's either going to take us as we mentioned to that all time high or back into the range. And I think it could heat up a little bit if we fail back into the range and again bring in that domino effect with some liquidation if we fail back down underneath 418. So those are my thoughts into the end of the week. It's been very quiet, obviously a nice move there on Monday, but since then really not much to do in the S&P themselves. Let's take a quick look at the internals. If you're not familiar with this screen, definitely get familiar. Top right hand corner will tell you what this all is, how you can set it up and how you can use it to your advantage intraday. For now, again, breaths, nothing to really write home about. Sure, today we did crack that 300 million. But if you were watching, we'll just illustrate this on the spy chart. It's easier here. Check out this volume down below, right? Very, very light, light volume. So even though the internals did crack that 300 million, not placing a whole lot of importance into it, advanced the Decliners, mostly bullish this week so far, holding up here, uh, usually plus 500 for uh, obviously Monday and today's session, but failing a little bit on, on uh, Tuesday. No big deal there. Obviously, we did uh, just stay in that range today. And what I want to illustrate in the ticks is, again, look at this area here, right? So the extreme ticks on either side are not really being attacked. So that to me is just indicative of, you know, algorithmic trading. People are not getting emotional right now. And that's why we're seeing the sideways market, right? So that's something to keep an eye on as well. Not really telling us much. This uh, cumulative build here down at the bottom, that might tell us a little bit of something, right? There is a slight edge there to the bulls. And again, as we discussed with some of those sector charts, I think just holding here at the top of the balance and outside of it now is more bullish, of course, than bearish. Let's flip over to our market profile and just take a look at what's going on here. Obviously, this was our breakout of the range here early on in the session on Monday. We got that trend day. And of course, value was established higher up here, which is a bullish thing. And now we're holding that value, uh, most importantly, up and outside of the range. So there's value here. The breakout range, just to give you a visual, is of course this sort of uh, 4185 area. That's the equivalent of 418 SPY. And we are holding, right, value area low essentially on Tuesday was right to that level. Sure, we did dip down below a little bit here and a little bit here, but for the most part, value is overwhelmingly uh, to the upside above our 41.85, which has to be more bullish than bearish. Now, one thing I want to point out about the profile here is, of course, uh, we had singles right here, single prints, and those should act as like very, very weak support, right? So when the sellers did get some action down into them, it's it's noteworthy to me that we didn't travel all the way to the low of this move. There's very little structure there. The sellers really shouldn't have had a hard time moving back down underneath. 
and they didn't, right? So what's that tell you about the sellers here or about the buyers, right? The buyers are strong and holding or the sellers just don't want to participate. They're scared of a potential rally higher. They don't want to commit selling volume or short positions here and take the market back lower, okay? So I thought that was noteworthy. The other thing we can talk about is, of course, the single prints up here. That should be traveled through easy if we take out today's high and builds the, the case for an easier upside move than downside, right? The other thing we have to consider is on today's profile, we do technically have a poor low here. Sure, we did take out the low with one B TPO underneath, but generally you do look for at least two ticks of excess and we do not have that. So poor low on the profile, we moved away from it, built value higher, Point of control is sort of smack in the middle of the range. Obviously, this purple line here is the 50% mark halfback, and we will see what happens in the overnight session. But for now, nothing, no glaring issues on the profile. I just really wanted to point out the nuance here with the single prints and that the sellers weren't able to travel through them as they should have been, which of course, as we've sort of hammered home now, is more bullish than bearish. Back over to our thinker swim to wrap up the broad market here with the Qs and IWM. The Qs, again, just like XLK, that we talked about looks good just holding here at uh, 334, right? If we back off slightly, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Something I want to bring to your attention is our Fibonacci's. It's obviously much a uh, much different story on SPY. We're well above the 61.8, but now on the Qs, we finally have a close above the 61.8. And generally when that happens, it's very rare that you you know make a, a return to the 0% mark. So it's likely that we hold sideways or potentially go higher. I wouldn't really expect a deeper pullback than the 50 SMA at this point in time, which is coinciding just coincidentally with the 50% Fibonacci. So that's what I would watch out for here in the queues into the end of the week. Uh, you know, Sideways to slightly higher, we have the bump in the road at 336.50, and then expect chop as we get into this overhead supply here. Um, you know, tomorrow or excuse me, next week is a new week. It's a holiday week uh, that may bring light volume. People may be preparing for that. So another something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Volume is tapering off here on the downside. Moving over to IWM to sort of uh, wrap up our broad market. And again, this is what I wanted to talk about. Although it looks like IWM certainly had the best day here, really just going sideways, right? It's still an inside bar here. Uh, and the play is if you take out the high, obviously just trade it higher towards 227. If you remain inside of the balance, you just expect more balance. I wouldn't really be favoring the downside since we do have back-to-back -back candles, uh, you know, with the same size body at least. Generally, what, what you do is, you know, interpret this as more bullish because the most recent candle took back a majority of the selling uh, capacity there, especially with a, a weak close at the lows there on Tuesday. So it's noteworthy to me at least that the IWM did close higher. I would be looking for it to take out that sort of two-day high that it's put in right around, let's just put a level to that right around 223.65. So that would be my watch on IWM into the end of the week. Let's quickly flip through our core list of companies now, just sort of see what's going on here. Uh, Apple, not a whole lot. Inside bars here, three days, or just a number of days of balance. I still think the key break is over 128. Uh, you see that 50 SMA is tangled up in there as well. It could cause a nice move to the upside if we finally get some acceptance above that area there. That would be my sort of bias into the end of the week or a short underneath the 126 essentially. Uh, those are our two day lows that have been holding pretty well uh, so far this week. Netflix, not a whole lot going on here, just more inside bars. If we zoom in, we'll notice we're back inside of this overall choppy range. So I wouldn't really place a whole lot of emphasis into direction based on this daily chart and rather just wait for intraday setups. Obviously your little uh, balance areas here, look for longs over the top or shorts underneath the bottom. Next up, we have Tesla. Great day today on Tesla. Um, if you were watching intraday, you noticed it was a pretty trendy day and we went right to the resistance trend line. So Tesla will definitely be a top watch into the end of the week to see if we get any sort of intraday bearish setups to take it short off that trend line, even though, uh, you know, we have this overwhelm, well, not overwhelming, but from an intraday perspective, a nice green trend. If you were to look at something like a 15 minute chart, I am, uh, you know, looking for that potential bearish setup. If it doesn't come, no worries. We'll just take it long. Uh, if there's a bullish setup to continue this trend and clearly showing us that the market it wants to break the resistance trend line. And in that case, I would have to have SPY and the Qs both being green to really give me that confidence to take it on the break of the trend line. Next up, we have Alibaba. Haven't really been trading this one recently. Um, it just, it does not doing much, right? There's really not a whole lot of range to play with here. Uh, I would say again, just consolidating inside bars, nothing really on my radar to 
watch into the end of the week. Facebook, two back-to-back -back, uh, little dojis here, and I like this setup. It's, it's just such a clear long over this sort of area of resistance or a short underneath that area there. If you look at this intraday, and Microsoft is gonna be very similar. We'll look at a, a chart there in a minute too. If you look at these areas, I mean, look at this was just a little upper wick, right? It's not really like we spent too much time accepting above that area there, which is right around 329, right? So your key break is at that level. Your key flush is underneath the sort of 326. If you look at these three uh, wick lows, I mean, if that breaks, you're just looking at a snappy move. Probably, you know, I wouldn't say the, the length of that arrow all in one day, but look at this, right? Poor structure there. It's the equivalent of those single prints in the S&Ps on Facebook. So NVIDIA is up next, obviously reported earnings after the bell today and it looks like they're just kind of hovering sideways to slightly lower, but still overall in a two-day balance. Let's go back to a daily time frame here uh, and check in. Um, so yeah, holding here, it does look more bullish than bearish, but of course with earnings, we'll see how that shakes out into the morning. Not really gonna waste time on that in case something crazy happens and completely destroys whatever I say. Uh, Microsoft, exact same thing as I said uh, on Facebook here. Look at the two dojis back to back. Your obvious long is over the top or short underneath the bottom to target that 50 SMA and sort of breakout point from in here at 248.05. Obviously the upside target here is looking for at least the 254 quarter and then looking for the potential bottom of the gap, depending on how strong the trend or breakout is that day. And lastly, we'll leave you off with Amazon here. Um, Amazon's been a, an interesting one. Um, today, I thought it was going to go and, and see a much better or stronger rather uh, trend. So if we just zoom in, you'll notice we had right, right here, nice trend higher, and then it was given back into the afternoon and end of the day. So that being said, Amazon's kind of a question mark for me, at least into the end of the week, inverted hammer following a regular hammer. So that's throwing some mixed signals, right? Only looking for intraday setups here on Amazon and premiums will be cheaper into Thursday and Friday. So it might be some something worth taking advantage of. If we were to get a clean break, maybe above this area here, 33.10, I would take that long, right? That's a clear setup there to me. Uh, but as it sits right now, not really seeing anything worth, uh, you know, paying attention to diligently into the earlier part of tomorrow and potentially Friday. So that's going to wrap up the midweek market update. Again, thank you guys so much for helping the channel grow and really building a nice community here inside of the Trade Brigade. Uh, the comments section, the Discord, the Instagram, the Twitter, all of these things are really awesome to connect with like-minded traders and just sort of do this as a group instead of individually. So appreciate you all. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it valuable or learned anything new, let me know down below in the comments section or by leaving the video a thumbs up. And with that being said, I hope to see you all in the weekly watch list on Sunday.